So the bell rings, and this is not a test, this is not a drill, this is real. We had missions before that, but not to this scale. This was a massive attack, and Canada was about to go out the door into the unknown. I'm Chief Warrant Officer Glenn Slawin. I did my two tours of Bosnia within three years of each other. You know, four years later, I was in Afghanistan. And then three years after that, I was with the Navy when they deployed to Haiti. And like you're sitting around with other NCOs or other friends and you're talking like, I ain't been out the door in five, six years and I'm getting itchy. You didn't sign up to sit in a classroom. You didn't sign up to you know, do uh, online courses. You signed up to get out the door and render effect. So when the Maui mission popped up, I was, I was doing everything I could to get on that mission. Uh, 2012, Toreg Rebellion happened. There were factions that were trying to separate the country. Some Islamic terrorist factions that were working through the area as well. So the country had fallen into the chaos. If Mali can be controlled by some form of authority and they can regulate the movement through that area, you can remove a lot of uh, drug and human and weapons trafficking. The mission had been running for about five years at that point. There was uh, some capabilities and capacities that they didn't have on station. Uh, and that was where Canada came in with uh, heavy lift capacity as well as medevac. And that was our two main roles. First thing I did is look at our watch. We had four or five months in which to build this capacity, build the mission, and get out the door. I had never been on a UN mission. I had never been on a Roto Zero. I had never been a senior NCO. I'd never been to Africa. There was so much we had to learn. This is why you joined. This isn't a job. This isn't you know going to an office or going to a factory. This is way beyond that. These are new conditions for a lot of people. You prepare for them, but when you get on the ground, it's a whole different creature. This is just one example, dust storms. So we were on the ground maybe 36 hours. Uh, it's day one, I don't even know my name at this point. This is a system that's a mile high and 250 kilometers long. It's advancing about 70 kilometers an hour. This is a wall of sand and dirt and rain and mess that's coming at you and it's not gonna wait for you. The very first boots on the ground representing Canada on the UN stage, it's a, it's a really cool feeling. Just before I'm about to roll out, uh, the attack on Eagle Hawk happened. We had missions before that, but not to this scale. Uh, towards the end of January, uh, there was a coordinated attack on one of the northern uh, UN bases, and uh, dozens of people are victims, injuries, deaths, and just getting overrun. So everybody's acting. Watch everybody pick up and go is stunning. It is a massive, massive undertaking with a lot of moving parts going, but seamless, absolutely seamless. And before you know it, inside a couple of minutes, the blades are spinning, and a few minutes after that, they're up and going. And that bird can help. We were more than just uh, a taxi or an ambulance. We were a flying trauma center, running back and forth, picking people up, loading people in. Security is on the ground, making sure the aircraft is safe. Medics are doing their fantastic work, getting people assessed, getting people into that aircraft, and getting them back to our hospitals in Gao or wherever, uh, wherever else we have to take them. Sector commanders are coming in and praising what we can do. And uh, it, it, was, it was hard to have to shut it down and pack it up and send it home a year later. The way that we could take from a bunch of different capacities and within a couple of months, bolt them together to create air medevac, practice it on Maple Resolve, deploy it and employ it while we're in Africa, mind blowing feel very fortunate to have been on the Mali mission, uh, to be on Roto Zero, to help reestablish Canada in their, that traditional UN-style peacekeeping role that we've been so famous for since the 50s, and helping you know, achieve a, a lasting, stable peace in a lot of places that need it right now. I do think about the, uh, the mission in Mali a lot. Uh, a lot of the things we did, uh, the people that we helped out, the people that we worked with, uh, it's never, it's never forgotten, and it's always, there's relationships you build that carry on now across nations, across forces. Um, so yeah, Mali is constantly on